Hi, we're about to enter into a very delicate subject. It's delicate, but it's very powerful and very important to begin to address it from a different perspective. And that topic is the topic of addiction. And unfortunately, um, we are all addicts of some kind or another, whether they're biochemical ones or emotional ones, we are addicts of some form or another. And what I mean by addiction is anything that we do, known or unknown to us, ignorant or otherwise, witting or unwitting, that is engaged in the avoidance of personal responsibility. I know that's a different way to describe addiction because mostly we would consider addiction as a compulsion that somebody else has that makes it difficult for them to biochemically stop smoking or drinking or whatever their addiction might be we think of addiction in those terms most commonly, but in reality, addiction is actually an avoidance of an unresolved pain. That would be the first part of the addiction. The addiction to avoid a unresolved pain usually means I'm going to do something to stay busy or biochemically engaged to avoid the unresolved pain. It's not so much that's important about the act of the addiction. The most important consideration is our avoidance of the responsibility to find the source of the addiction, not just the addiction itself. So someone might be an alcoholic and they're struggling to stop themselves from drinking and maybe they quit cold turkey or whatever they do with it, and they may have some success or they may not. But oftentimes when we try to aggressively control an addiction by our force of will, we may be successful. We may actually surmount that one addiction without realizing we haven't actually gotten to the emotional damage that propels it, nor have we gotten to the most important part is the false belief system that is actually still being transmitted. So I may willfully stop smoking, which is not an easy thing for a person to do. I've not had directly that experience of that form of addiction, but the automatic ability to be able to move forward change that by a force of will might be successful, but most commonly, it's a form of denial of responsibility of looking at the reason why. Then it comes out as an additional form of addiction with some other substance or a different activity. Oftentimes, alcoholics, they convert alcohol into sugar, so they go into substitutes of other biochemical forms of food or sugar, they find another way to substitute one addiction for another addiction without ever really resolving the pain beneath it. But remember, it's not the act of the addiction itself that is the most damaging. It is the denial of the responsibility to discover the spiritual truth underneath it, driven by a false belief system. So there's where the real error is. The error of denial of one's personal responsibility. It's not the error of denying one's ability to control the environment or control oneself. Because oftentimes if I'm an addiction, I'm usually in some form of codependent addiction with somebody else, and they provide me the residue of my need for being fulfilled. Maybe it's my need for attention. They have a need for support or security. And the mutually codependent addiction 
plays itself out in a unloving form, and it's a constantly accumulating a physical or emotional damage that one day causes disease or suffering or death. But underneath it is an unresolved emotional pain and the false belief system. Now, if somebody decides in that codependent relationship to no longer provide that emotional addiction, that usually provides the opportunity for anger. Anger with the withdrawal of an addiction, anger is a way of seeing I'm not getting what I want. So oftentimes, anger is a very good friend or benefit or the ability to be able to examine yourself. Anger means there's something to examine about myself. Anger typically means I'm not getting what I want. And logically, if you look at that, that means I'm not getting my addiction fulfilled biochemically or emotionally by you, and I'm angry about not getting that met. Now, if I'm willing to examine that I'm not getting what I want is my biochemical or emotional addiction that provides me the opportunity for anger. But if I use that emotional moment and I desire to look at the causation about why I want that to fulfill a feeling inside myself so I can avoid pain, and I'm willing to keep looking at deeper and deeper layers of it, eventually it comes to the place where you are examining more honestly the reality of what the false belief system is that keeps recreating the emotional damage. So, for example, if I have a false belief system that I don't feel loved and I want my love fulfilled by somebody else's attention and I have either expectation or demand or I have neediness or I pander to them or I want to control with jealousy, rage and who knows what are all the methods of controlling that because I have a fear of not feeling loved. The false belief system is I'm not loved. I need to examine the truth about that because eventually I'll find out that if I keep examining the truth, that yes, at least theoretically, I know that I'm loved all the time from my divine creator, even though I'm acting out addiction. So my suggestion to you is to observe your addictions while you're engaged in them. The only way I can describe it with another graphic is to show you a different view. Now, excuse me for one second. The reason I put this one here is because there is a natural mobility of energy that goes up the body, out the top, and down. That's a torus. Scientifically, it's a movement of energy up and out and down. Eventually, the reverse of this becomes the most useful way to approach the addiction. Let me show you another graphic. That graphic may look more like this one here, and that is the presence of my energy field around me. Now, these individual threads, they are actual mechanical locations in my spirit body. By that, I mean I have a physical body, and I have a dimension about an arm's length away, more for some people, less for others, but about an arm's reach away, I have another body around me that's given multiple names depending on the religion or the philosophy that you wish to engage. But these actual threads, they are like vibrational sequences or notes in a piano or instruments in a symphony. They actually exist as layers around me. And each one of them typically has one or more types of emotional addictions associated with that level. For example, one addiction might be about sexuality, another one might be about food, another one might be an addiction to emotional rage, another one might be 
addiction to other people's attention, and so on and so on. Addiction to a particular philosophy or religion or attitude or political party. The number of possible addictions is far more than we think because people have automatic addictions inside their own body. Those automatic addictions, by the way, is an interior mechanism that keeps your lungs breathing and your heart beating. It controls your hormonal structure, your degree of inflammation. It controls your digestion, your assimilation, your eliminations. That's all held together by this fabric. Now, this fabric is a series of threads. Let me show you another perspective of the threads. And the threads sometimes might be like this, which is each of these is a, uh, an addictive or emotional memory from different parts of the family tree. So one great grandmother might give you the addiction to jealousy, while another great grandmother might give you the addiction to one particular religion in denial of anyone else's right to have their own approach to life. So each one of these threads can be biochemical, can be emotional, can be spiritual addictions. There's lots and lots of threads of these addictions that happen around us. Now, rather than just to fight these addictions, I'd rather you consider that these addictive forms, they have a power equal to something like this. Now, I'm saying that this is obviously a picture of the sun, which has its own forms of cascading threads. And I'm saying that the human being has within it a force and a power equal to or greater than the sun. So our composite of the desire to project or demand or attack or have impatience or addictions of any form, whether it's to finances or people or power or safety or all the myriad other forms of addiction, they're extremely powerful because they're driven by a force that is typically stronger than us. So the best way to deal with this is to be authentic, to observe one's addictions as they're occurring. I'm not saying just give in to every impulse or give in to every addiction that you no, you have, but when you see yourself engaging in the addiction, for me, for example, one of my addictions is salmon. I still like to kill those fish and eat salmon or halibut or you name it. I, I like a good fish dinner. I know eventually I need to let go of my addiction to creating damage in the social, emotional, physical world by extracting resources from the animal kingdom and um, taking those addictions into myself without the regard for other people's needs or other people's environment. I have my own addictions of multiple forms, and everyone does. Anybody who thinks they don't have an addiction is an addiction to denial. Because everyone does. So if you think you don't have them, yeah, you might reconsider it again in some form or another because there is going to be some form of addiction you have. It could be to a philosophy, there is a God, there is no God, we're all God, or whatever. You can have lots of different forms of holding a false belief system because the deepest forms of addiction are about holding the false belief system. I know it's hard to consider, but addictions in their actions are forgivable. We can release addictions and eventually release the damage to ourselves and others that that damage caused. They're forgivable. But the part of the addiction that is not forgivable, in my opinion, is the denial of the responsibility to find out the reason why you have the addiction. What's actually driving the addiction is more important than the result of the addiction. So yeah, deal with the results, deal with the pain and the suffering, 
make your restoration, do what you need to do. But the real responsibility is to find the false belief systems that you need to be able to feel. The only way to really find those false belief systems, my opinion, is ask for higher help to help you find the truth about your own denial of the false belief systems that you keep sublimated or hidden. This is why addiction is so difficult, because they're interwoven into our body chemistry or glandular system. They exist. And just consider the possibility that the average person may have 200 forms of false belief systems that are inherently causing damage to self, damage to others, and yes, damage to the all. Our false belief systems are far more damaging because they have the power of the sun on the spirit body level. So we need to at least examine it. So start with this simple approach. Observe, watch with your own feelings. Just become self-observant. If you see yourself doing a particular kind of repetitive behavior that you know in your own conscience is probably an addiction. Mine is, well, I still like chocolate at the right time. I still like chocolate in my coffee called the mocha at the right time. I kind of know it's an addictive process that I really don't need it, but I really want that biochemical feeling of what it feels like. Those are forms of subtle indicators of unresolved addiction. And beneath that is emotional damage. Yes, you got to get to that level. And then below that is the false belief system that's causing the emotional damage. It's not the addiction itself. It's the refusal to actually look at the truth about what's underneath it. So I hope this is at least the beginning of the desire to want to examine more carefully one's biochemical, social, emotional, and spiritual addictions and to seek out the truth of what there really is. I hope this has been helpful. There's much more on this subject. I'll do my best to bring more at another time. Thanks for listening.